So what's going on in here? Mike Coates is about to call this granny flat home. And this one here is a shower setting. Yeah. And that's a bathtub. Yeah. The one bedroom unit in his mother's backyard is costing $100,000 to build. While Mike is very appreciative that his mum is forking out for this, he didn't expect to be here at the age of 44. I've been trying to get a rental since June last year. Uh, the problem I had was I was competing with 50 other people each time. Having Simba here didn't make it any easier. He's been in the spare room for a year and the granny flat is a longer term solution. I've got friends struggling all over the place. There's a lot of people that I know that have just had to go home or give up pretty much their dream of their own home. Mike's rental prospects aren't getting better. Supply levels are actually down to their lowest level since November of 2012. Across the nation, just over 1% of all rentals are now sitting vacant. Finding a home is even harder in Adelaide, Perth and Melbourne, where fewer places are available. Sydney is the most expensive capital city to live in. Other major markets are hitting around $600 a week. Rents for houses are rising faster than units. More recently, capital city rents have accelerated as we've seen the return of overseas migration. Rents are now 30% higher than they were just three years ago, adding to core inflation. Well, this is our kitchens. The boss of the company that sold Mikey's granny flat says demand has increased during the housing crisis. The granny flat is no longer for the granny. It's about 50% for the young. A father himself, Matt worries about where his children will live as they get older. I don't think there's an easy fix. Um, just trying to get more rental out there will help and the secondary dwelling system will help. With rents still rising and buying your own house getting even more out of reach, people like Mike are feeling stuck. If they're not building a granny flat or moving back in with their parents or a share house, then others are getting even more creative and turning to house sitting during tough times. Cheryl and Richard's long-term lease ended last year, pushing them into house sitting. It's rent free and you look after their animals and the home. I think I've really fallen in love with all the dogs that I've looked after and some cats too. But Cheryl says all of the moving around can get tiring and it is not a long-term solution. A lot of my friends are actually doing share houses now and that's a possibility. Women over 50 are the fastest growing group looking for a flatmate. Eliza Owen says that people moving into share houses will free up more properties and more homes are being built now too. More vulnerable, low-income households need to be depending on a steady supply of social and affordable housing. We're starting to see a lot more of that initiative and policy flow through various levels of government, which is a good thing. Longer term, I would imagine growth in rents is going to continue easing just because we're expecting that cash rate to gradually move lower through 2024. That will encourage more private investment. Mike thinks he'll be in the granny flat with Simba for a few years to come. I'm fortunate that I've had a mum that's been able to do this for me. But she has started joking that she'll build a hedge between the main house and Mike's new home. <laughs>